So what I want to talk to you about now is the common course outline that we put together for our undergraduate research course. This outline is a, a series of lessons we put together that will allow anyone to structure their own course-based undergraduate research experience. So the first lesson we want to talk about is the introduction to core literature. This is how you start the class. So what we did for this is we had everyone pick five to six core papers depending on their topic. And those would be assigned for the students to read. Those core papers then, the instructor would have a series of questions prepared that they would use to enable a Socratic discussion of those papers in the next class period. Once that core literature then is assigned and read, we want to look on now to lesson two, scientific literature. At this point, you're going to send the students out to start doing research on their own subject. Now that they've looked at the core literature, which should basically describe to them the area that your cure is interested in. Now what they're going to do is they're going to search on their own. So in this lesson, I like to introduce to my students uh, some sort of reference management software. I use Mendeley because it's provided by my university. There's many of them out there, but it's really helpful to have the students have that. So what I then ask them to do is to bring back to the class next for the next lesson one paper and give a brief, and I do mean brief, presentation on that paper where they answer questions of what is the hypothesis of the paper and why are they interested in it. Once each student has given those presentations, I turn them loose to form their own groups based on students having similar research interests. So this is how you begin to build your student groups, not based on who likes each other, but based on the research interests they bring to that second class with the article that they found. All right. Once that lesson is done, you're going to ask them actually for lesson three, you're going to want them to have turned in a bibliography. This is what I, I have them do now that they've actually done some research, they've gotten their papers together. Based on those presentations, they're going to form those teams. And now you're going to ask them, what is the question they want to ask? How do they want to do it? And you're going to assign a method section. But here's the thing that I found effective in, in my cure is I have the individuals first write a method section and I, I tell them specifically, do not work with each other. Do not work with each other. Everyone work on their own and turn in a method section. And, and I make it clear to them that, that it's not gonna be graded on how well it's written. It's gonna be graded on the fact that you turn it in or not because I want them to each get a draft of how they perceive the methods. That then is the end of lesson three. So in lesson four, the students have turned in those individual methods. I then share all those methods within a team. So if you've got a team of four students, they now get everyone else's methods. And from that, you find it's a real good learning activity because they really begin to see how each of them perceives this study that they're building that they've just constructed. Now you assign them a group method so that they work as a group to write one method. And I found by doing it this way, it gives them a much better grasp and idea of what they're trying to do with their research project. Now, once they've refined their methods, I usually bring them back together in a class meeting and have them do presentations to the class and peer review. So that the other students can ask questions and, and try to help them to, to improve their methods and show them a peer review process of really that's similar to what's done in the scientific community. After these proposals have been discussed and whatever editing needs to be done, your next lesson is, is research. Now, weeks into the semester, you get them to execute the study. So they do it, they collect their data. Your next lesson is, of course, analyzing the data. This is where students in each team, of course, it's going to be different, right? Every team has a different question. Every question has a different set of data that they're going to collect for it. But here's where you're going to analyze that data. You're going to start showing them different methods of graphical presentation. There's a, a whole new school of data visualization techniques. That's where you can introduce them to the class. And then again, you want them to write the results section. And, and at this point, I again assign it as individuals. And like we did with the methods section, you're going to bring them back next week and have them review those results as a group. That uh, is the first part of the eighth lesson. Then you're going to assign the discussion. Now that they've actually analyzed their data, they've come to what conclusions they can or cannot support and why they cannot or can't support them, it's time to write the discussion. Bring them back in the next week. You have them review the discussion and, and begin to write it as a team. 
Now you cite, start having them write the introduction. They've already done a proposal, so this is actually one of the easier steps. Now they need to write this introduction for either the, the manuscript you're going to have them write, as well as using that then to edit down to a research poster. Finally, we're going to have them review the introduction and begin the abstract. I always have students write the abstract at the very end after they put everything together. Finally, we're going to start combining these parts into either a manuscript or a poster. When I teach the class, I have students do both. So they, they write a research paper and they do a research poster. We have an on-campus symposium every spring where students can present research. So I have my undergraduate research students present at that, at that symposium. Final lesson is really to complete everything. And, and this is really one that, that's much more um, guided towards the students and helping them on their individual projects. Because at this point, you, you really have, in, in, in my experience, I have a class of 24, so I have six teams of four. I've got six different projects going on, and, and it almost seems like six different classes. So what do I do when things go sideways? What do I do when unplanned things go? What do I do when I deviate from this core outline? Well. To quote one of my favorite movies, Pirates of the Caribbean, the code is more of what you'd call guidelines than actual rules. All of these outlines are, are to be modified with your class. And, and I, can't, I can't insist enough to tell you that there are guidelines at best, and it needs to flow with how the research goes. Without the guidelines, it, it would be probably more difficult to design this class. But once you've put your class together, recognize these guidelines are really just there to provide a framework you're the one that needs to not only build that framework, but heavily modify it to suit your needs. Well, I hope that's been helpful, and I look forward to hearing your questions in the question and answer period. Thank you.